Prisma's like my baby. I've been using it for the past eight months on every single full stack application. And frankly, I didn't see a world where I wouldn't be using it. However, I'm human and we tend to get bored of using the same thing over and over again. So I did some research and I was looking for different ORMs that I could use in my applications. And I found something called Drizzle. And so what I like to do in this video is just walk you through what Drizzle is, the setup of Drizzle into your React or Next.js applications, and obviously the benefits, the use cases, and the downsides of uh, this ORM. And so first things first, what is Drizzle? Now Drizzle is an ORM. So in a full stack application, right, we have the front end, which you know about. So let's just call this the front end like this. And here we have the database. Now these could include stuff like MySQL, right? It could be a Postgres database. There are different types of app databases that store user information. However, when trying to talk to the database, it gets annoying when we're trying to, you know, get data or send data. It's like confusing. It takes a very long time. And the experience of sending stuff directly to a database um, tends to get confusing and takes a long time. So what was created is things like ORMs, which makes talking to databases a little bit easier. And if we erase here, you know, we can uh, just make this look a little bit better. You can kind of think of it as this protection over the database, like a protector, and we can call this drizzle right here, for example, this drizz, that we directly talk to first, and then that talks to the database. And one more thing to make this example whole, like in the database, you can use something like an ORM to make it easier to send or query data. In the front end, we use stuff like UI libraries, Tailwind CSS, um, Bootstrap, those are things in place to make writing CSS easier, right? We use Tailwind because it's very efficient. Well, the same thing with an ORM. And so the next thing before we get into actual setup and the code of Drizzle, why am I using Drizzle? Because like you know, there's a bunch of different um, ORMs, databases that are available, why use Drizzle? And simply put, okay, it is because you have more control over the stuff that you write and where your data goes. Again, let's get out our handy dandy pencil over here. What I found when using Prisma was that it was very annoying when trying to you know, query data and send data. Like we said, when the, with the database and the abstraction, right? I felt that Prisma was just way, way, way too abstract. And I felt that I couldn't do the things I wanted to with my database and the things I was trying to do. And that's what I found with Prisma. But with Drizzle, what I found, and you'll, you'll see in a second, was that the abstraction was just perfect enough that you, know, you have enough control over what you are writing and controlling most aspects of your ORM and database. It's kind of like the difference between Tailwind and Bootstrap. And I actually got the example from WebDev Simplified from this video, so I highly recommend you check that out. And so in Tailwind, right, it's not like you have zero control. In fact, you have a lot of control over what your design looks like, where everything goes, and you, you control the entire design through and through efficiently. On the other hand, my big problem with Bootstrap is that you have no control or very limited control over the look of a button, the design of the border of an input, stuff like that, where it's like very limited control that it becomes cookie cutter. And that is exactly what Drizzle is and Prisma is in, in this area. Prisma felt like Bootstrap and Drizzle felt like Tailwind. Now, I'm sure this is good because we have control over, you know, the database and a lot more control where everything goes, like, like choosing a specific database, like, like Postgres or SQL or SQLite. You know, we have control over a specific database, which is really cool. However, I found that the downside with Drizzle, and this will be real quick, is that it's a lot more difficult. You know, as things get less abstract, it will be obviously harder to write. You know, it's one thing to write Python, it's another to write C, it's another to write assembly, right? We build on abstraction to make things easier. However, although it has been a little bit difficult, it is well worth it because of the amount of control that you have, and you will see in a second, and the uses of it in your code, which is just amazing. And I would just like to walk you through um, what this could look like in your code and everything I did to really set it up and write things. And frankly, I'll be honest, uh, setting it up was quite annoying. I'm used to using Prisma where it's like really easy. So this was quite a 
I wouldn't say annoying, but it was it wasn't the best experience. But anyways, uh, you're gonna learn from my mistakes here, so you, you don't have to worry about anything. <laughs> and to set it up, all I had to do was just install a Drizzle ORM at Neon Database and then the Drizzle Kit. And basically the Drizzle Kit is the command line interface that you can like use to make Drizzle commands like migrate and stuff like that. And the Neon Database, why we're doing this one is that it's the database that we're using. So for me, I am using Neon Database for my database, like we said, the, the Drizzle is not a database. It's an ORM that talks to a database. But what's cool is that there's many different options. So for example, here we have the Neon database. We also have stuff like a Postgres database. We also have SQL. There's many different options that just makes Drizzle amazing. And so once we have both Drizzle Kit and the Drizzle ORM installed, um, we just import some things. And here's where I'll actually walk you through the actual code. But basically, all we had to do here was just make a DB folder. It could be whatever you want to call it. And within here, I made an index.ts file, a migrate.ts file, and a schema.ts file. And so first things first, let's go through the index. This is basically just connecting our drizzle to our Neon or whatever database that you were using. And for us, we just had to import Neon, we had to import Drizzle, and then our schema, which is this schema over here. Now the schema is just the, the data or like the things we have. So here we have a user, so maybe we have user authentication. This would be the user data. And we'll actually walk through how to do this in a second, but back to over here, what you'd wanna do is just grab the database URL so that you can connect to your database. And once I did that, I went to a drizzle.config.ts file over here, and I just wrote out the configuration of where my data is, uh, where I plan to store it and what I want to do with it. So for example, my schema is located at that slash db drizzle schema.ts. And if we go over here, db drizzle schema.ts. And our migration file where we want that to be is in the, the db drizzle and then the migrations. And the driver, which is essentially like the database or the type of database we're using is a Postgres. And here we have the connection string for our database, as well as some things to uh, help us with the creation of the database. And so as of now, you're probably saying, okay, Nizar, you're, sh you're showing us how to set it up, but I wanna know how to do stuff with this data. Like how do I create a database? How do I talk to a database? How does that work? And so here is where we will go into our schema, which is where most of the magic will happen. For example, in our user, we will have, you know, the UUID, which is obvious, a primary key saying that this is the most important key, and then just make the key random. And in addition, in a user, we would probably want an email, a name, and you know, stuff like a password. So let's just do that real quick. So password, and then we can do a varchar, which is just the text. So varchar, and then password, and then let's just make it not null, you know, we need one, and then close brackets like that. And so as you can see, it's quite easy to make a model, but this is basically how it goes. And why I pulled out my other uh, VS Code page was to compare the Prisma to the Drizzle schema. And as you can see here, the Prisma looks a lot cleaner, you know? So for example, all we had to do in our Prisma was just write the model user like this and then have an ID string and, you know, a UUID or a default or whatever it may be. On the other hand, right over here, you can see we have to do imports. We have to write all this code like this. Like it's a lot clunkier, but that clunkiness is what we need. You see, we're importing it because we're grabbing a specific type of data. The PG core is from a Postgres type of ORM. So for example, if we had like an SQL one, we could just do SQL like this and we can have an SQL import. And obviously it would have different types of data usages and stuff like that. But we have much more control over the type of database we want, the type of data we're sending. So it's, it's much better in that way. And that's why I've been really enjoying it. And so as of now, right, we've just been showing you, but let's actually create um, a table, right? And to do that, let's just go down here and let's make an export const. Um, let's just do, I don't know, event. Let's say we have an event and you know we need to store some things. And we're gonna say PG or Postgres event, or actually table like this, and then event like that, comma, and then the curly brackets, and then you open it up like this. And for each one, we need an ID. So let's do an ID. Let's do UUID with an ID, dot primary key, and then default random. In addition, for each event, we would probably need the user's full name. So we can just do that var char like this, full name, 
dot not no we need that name as well and finally let's get the age because we uh, actually need that and let's do um age dot not null and i don't think we can use number uh, let's see. Okay, so I think we have to use numeric like this. And so cool. So we created our first table, but this is not saved onto Drizzle. And so let's just save this to our Drizzle so it's saved on our Neon database. And then uh, we can do a couple more things that you'll actually really like. And one thing about Drizzle is that we actually have to set up some things in here so that we can make everything work and to make things a little bit easier, okay? And so to save stuff to my Drizzle and my database, I am running DB push and I'm running this for it. So Drizzle kit push PG config Drizzle config.ts, okay? And to migrate, so I actually push stuff to the database, I'm running migrations generate or Drizzle kit generate PG. And finally to run the Drizzle kit studio, which we will cover, um, we run Drizzle Kit Studio. And so as of now, we wrote new data, right? And so what we want to do is just run npm run db push. And so what will happen is we will get this piece of data over here. And we are getting warned that we you know we're going to add specific things. Uh, this is completely fine. But if we make this a little bit bigger and we're asking, do you want to push the changes? Um, let's let's push that one changes. And if you go into our Drizzle, everything seems to be working fine. And so what we need to do next, right? is let's see what else we need to do. Let's migrate everything else. So let's make this a little bit bigger and let's run npm run migrations generate. Just like this. And we are getting the same warning. So is event table created or renamed? We're gonna say event is a new sort of table and we seem to be done. So now if we go back into our migrations, you can see we have a third migrations table and in it, you will hopefully see a event. So there we go. We're just getting a log that we got an event. Now, the final thing I wanted to cover for Drizzle is the Drizzle Studio. So like in Prisma and most RMs, you have a GUI or GUI uh, to manage your data, something like this, where, you know, it shows all the data for the users. I have this for our, all my applications and you have the same in Drizzle. And basically to run Drizzle Studio, you have to like install it using MPX Drizzle Studio. And then in your package JSON, you can either run drizzle kit studio or if you're lazy like me you can just clear this out like this and run npm run studio and you can see over here we have the drizzle setup and we can just click on that open that up and in here you can see we have a user and an event and so whenever the user will input data into here so let's say we have user authentication we will be able to easily see the data in lifetime over here and the final thing I wanted to cover is just utilizing this in the front end. And since I don't have any data, we can't really do much. But anyways, let's say we're in our dashboard page over here. All we need to do to, you know, grab data or maybe if we want to display data is just import something like this. All we're doing here is just grabbing the user. So we're just grabbing this over here. And in the front end, because we exported the user as like a user, um, we could basically do whatever we want here. You know, we could like display data. But yeah, if you want to know more about Drizzle and, you know, the actual connection in front and the back end, then check out videos like this by uh, WebDev Cody. And there's also obviously the WebDev Simplified. So two channels I highly recommend. But yeah, if you like this type of content, please let me know. I'm more than happy to make more Drizzle content because I'm getting into it. So it'd be kind of cool to do. And also join the Discord server if you haven't already. It's the best place to go. Happy coding. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.